All right. What would you like me to talk about today? Okay, anybody else? Yes? Dreamers. What is it? Dreamers. Solitude. Yep. Not just not that, any day. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. The first request for those of you watching online was um, something about Credence Clearwater. <laughs> that's, that's what I wrote. I don't know how that fits, but... Oh, honoring the illusion without giving it credence. <laughs> um, what, a delicate, what a delicate balance to, to know the truth. I mean, it, look at people on the spiritual path. Listen to the questions from people on the path. Fundamental Christians, Buddhists, Wiccans, whatever. People that aren't on the path and struggle with life. And you're going to hear a, a consistent theme. They're thinking it's either all, and Course in Miracles students too, they're thinking it's all about the, the truth. And, and then they start perceiving what is the truth and telling other people what is the truth then others are completely caught up in the opposite, which is the illusion. So the people that are into the truth are shaming the illusion. You know you shouldn't be doing that. You know, you, you, no, no, you know you're caught up in the illusion. It, and, and so you try to get rigid and follow the truth. And then there's people that are caught up in the illusion. Some don't know it's an illusion. They make religion and politics out of the illusion and then wonder why it collapses all the time. So there's those who get up in the illusion, you know, get all caught up in the illusion. And, and those people shame the truth. Oh, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Uh, God is just like some fantasy of the mind. And you've got these two strange groups. You're either in one, the other, or you're totally messed up, bipolar, trying to deal with both of them. The idea is relax. Know the truth of God. It doesn't matter how messed up you are. Just in the back of your mind, no, it doesn't speak the truth of who you are. This stuff of this world doesn't define who you are. Yeah, but, but I've gone through a lot. I know, but know the truth. No matter how far off you've gone, thank God that the truth of God cannot change. I am, as God created me, a holy being. And somebody could say to you, yeah, but look what you've done and look what's been done to you. I didn't say that that didn't happen. That's called the illusion, and I respect it. Respect the illusion. Play the game. Wh whatever that is to you. Drive the speed limit instead of saying, well, I I'm enlightened. I'm ascending now, so I can drive 150 miles an hour, and it's okay. It's just part of my ascension process. Um, <laughs> it doesn't work. And then you're in jail. And they confiscate your card, and you're wondering, God, Archangel Michael, protect me. How did this happen? You know, and they're like, don't even speak to us. <laughs> you saw the sign on the road. No, but I'm ascending. I'm in another dimension. No, you're actually not. Pinch yourself, you know, and you'll find that you still have a body. Go the speed limit. You know, if, if things of this world, you got to respect them. I didn't say make them into your God. And that's the confusion that people live. Not knowing what things to, to accidentally or purposefully make into our gods. Don't worship the world. Don't worship politics. Don't even worship religion. These are people doing the best they can. Play the game. If, if you're diabetic, eat appropriately for your condition. Know that the divine you can't have a disease because it doesn't even have a body. The divine us is, is beyond description. And that part can never change. And it's there. It's just that it's hidden way inside, this light. Shaming ourselves for living the illusion, you know, and playing the game, or by trying to be so spiritual doesn't affect our divinity. You know, you, you think one more meditation and I'll really be divine. The divine self is going, oh, poor you. I'm, we're already here. It's just the you that's trying to improve yourself. Accept two things. 
except that when you think you're human, you're going to mess up and have beliefs that are kind of ludicrous, and except that your version of your divinity is something that falls far short of the true divinity, except that you really are divine, and kind of relax into that for a moment. To be able to sit, instead of trying to become perfect, to be able to sit and say, wow, the truth of God is beyond my comprehension. Like uh, in some factions of Buddhism, there's, there are meditations that sort of, to put it simplistically, um, I'm going to close my eyes. Okay, I'm, I'm meditating now. Wait, who's the I that's meditating? Because that's not me either. Let's go beyond the I that thinks I'm meditating. Okay, so I'm beyond that. Which, who's beyond that? You still think you're a you that's beyond the I that's meditating. And you layer and layer and layer. And it isn't, once you do this seven layers, now you're home. Because now who's the you that's seven layers in to peeling off the layers? There's a point where the, the thinking stops and you drop into what is. And that doesn't take you to the absolute because it's your entrance into the absolute, the, the consciousness of God. It's your first day there. So even then your mind can't completely comprehend it. So it's, it's like that. It's like when people pass over and they say, I, 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 I passed over and I saw... Um, loved ones or whatever. That's not the ultimate home heaven. That's just like a, a stage on the other side. Even, even passing over, there's these layers of perception that we still carry with us. You know, you'll see, for example, uh, uh, what, what, let's say, put it this way, it's subjective. It's what you expect to see. If you expect to see fire and brimstone, you might see that which is really a strange vacation to go on, but that's, if that's what you want, you know, and some people experience such things. But if you, if you expect, you know, okay, I saw Jesus, and oh my God, his white robe and sandals, as though there's fashion on the other side. Well, I can't have him naked. Got to have him dressed in something. Uh, you know, really? Because you don't know that maybe he would be perceived as pure light. But then even that's a perception. He's beyond sandals and a robe. He's this glorious being of light. What, what color? Give me some color. Oh, golden. Golden, radiant white. Because that's in your mind. Beyond colors. God is beyond colors. There's no golden. But so, so what I would do is just drop in and accept it. Just kind of learn to laugh at these things. I, I had a vision last night, and God said there's a diet all human beings should be on. It's called the holy diet. It's, it's still me making that up. The divine comes through our channels and our filters. And if I'm already, you know, for some reason, poised, either pre-planning this concept that diet is important, or sometimes you go, well, I wasn't into diet, so how would that explain it? Why did a new diet come through me when I'm not at all into diet? It could be proof that it was a spontaneous channeling from God. Not necessarily. Because if in your last lifetime you were Jack LaLanne, you might still be all health oriented, so you were the right vehicle. Helen, who wrote A Course in Miracles, Edgar Cayce, who channeled what he channeled, these are people whose pasts were relevant to the work they did in their most recent lifetime. It was never just something arbitrary. It looks arbitrary. So learning to relax and just, you know, it, it's okay to meditate and and get beyond, okay, I'm, I'm looking how to peel the layers of my sinful self would be a Christian perspe perspective. Uh, Buddhist perspective would be a little more intellectual, like, oh, there's the I that am not, and what is the I that is not, unless it is, you know, and, okay, great. There's a point where you, I would recommend where you go, but what does it feel like to be in the presence? And you drop, all the thinking just drop in. And let's say bliss overtakes you, just like, oh my God. And then you start thinking about that. I would recommend not. And you go, but, but is this the highest? I wonder, wow, this is the most expressive, deepest meditation I've ever, shh, just enjoy it. Because when you start thinking, you shut it off. Just relax into it and sort of, wow, this is really, oh. And I could be feeling this all the time. 
still thinking. So drop in further. Soak it in. When you have a wonderful experience, even if you go, I, I, suddenly this burst of light and the purple over came in to just showered on me and golden sparkles from the heavens. That's nice. But what does it feel like to be showered in golden sparkles? Instead of, yeah, and did you count them? Yes, there were 3,500. Now, how does that change you today? The idea, what, what did purple feel like? What did golden sparkles feel like? What did the forgiveness, if that was your meditation, what did it feel like? Get the feeling, soak it in, give thanks for it, and you've shifted. Don't analyze what dimension you think it brought you to. Don't analyze who's there. Oh, and, and guess who I saw? It was Archangel Gabriel, and then also my sister, who I didn't really like. I don't know why they were talking to each other, but they seem to be getting along. You're talking. Stop. Just what does it feel like? I don't care if it's all the archangels that appear to you. They want you to go into the feeling, not into them personally, which would then tempt you to make false gods of these kinds of beings. So <clears throat> a big part of us moving out of the thinking it's not an accident that you're trying to meditate and you're going into thinking processes. That's the ego trying to sabotage your experience. Because if you meditate and you have an experience of being in the presence of God, the ego doesn't exist there. So therefore it can't encourage you or allow you to easily move in that direction because it ceases to exist. So for its own survival, it's got to do the manic mind to keep you from going in that direction. Make sense? Psst. Psst. Thank you. OK. <laughs> Signals. All right. So, you know, it's just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust instead of doubt. If I start, even if you start positively analyzing your meditation, it's not positive at all. You think it is. Well, I was just trying to figure out, you know, what to mention. Stop. It's, it's the ego trying to get you from going home. So see it, see through it, and err to the side of trust instead of doubt. You're doubting when you start thinking. Generally speaking, it's a sign of doubt. The head starts kicking in and overcompensating. So I'm going to practice trust. Trust in, in who? And what kind, of, what kind of trust? People think there's divine trust. By the way, there's divine trust and human trust. And we think divine trust would mean trusting God, and human trust would be trusting humans. That sounds logical. But divine trust means to trust in the divine in yourself, the divine in others, and the divine in God. So real trust means I am trusting the way God would trust. It's not who is doing the trust, because humans can do divine trust. So it's not whether it's God trust is God, human trust is humans. It's how you trust that determines whether it's divine trust or human trust. When you trust in people and put conditions on it, it's human trust. When you trust untrustworthy parts of people, it's human trust. It's flawed. So know the truth, but respect the illusion. I know the truth is God created you in God's image. Therefore, God would want me to trust, I guess, just live dangerously and trust everybody about everything. And then you get all damaged and you go to the other side after you know death, probably due to some sort of stress and anxiety disorder over trusting people that kept backstabbing you. You get to the other side and God's going, I never told you to trust everyone. But there's God in everyone, and, and I was trusting the God in everyone that they were all going to be nice. And then you'd have to have, sit down, and God would have to explain how this really works, and then send you back anyway with all those backstabbers as your first and tenth husbands or wives, you know, uh, or parents or whatever else. None of that has to happen because you're being asked not to trust untrustworthy parts. How could that be divine trust? Well, because I'm trusting. No. That's foolish. It's not trust. Real trust means I'm trusting in the divinity of others. But 
If you don't know your divinity and you're still a hurtful person, I wasn't asked to trust in your hurtfulness. You're still selfish. You're still broken. You're, you're a, a, a renowned thief. And I say, could you do me, hold my money for me? It makes no sense. Well, I was trusting in the divine in them. Start with the divine in yourself. And the divine in yourself said, I wouldn't hand that to him. You see? So it's very interesting because know the truth, but respect the illusion. If I say respect the illusion, it almost sounds like I'm saying, so don't trust some people. And I'm, I'm, and I am and I'm not. Don't trust in their untrustworthy parts. And guess what? Most human beings have a history of wounding. Most human beings, or all, have an ego. The ego is not trustworthy, even if it pretends to be. Hey, I'm looking out for you, man. So here's my advice. Don't ever trust anybody, ever. See, that's the egos telling you to be defensive in order to create a pseudo version of safety in your life. Safety, a safe environment, a safe lifestyle with people and who you trust and don't trust. Safety is how you get towards the world of trust. So let me say it this way. You can be untrustworthy or judge people as untrustworthy. You can also start developing trust. That's what I suggest we all do right now. Practice developing trust, but not foolishly. Trust within boundaries. And the third is divine trust. We're not ready for divine trust every day, but set your aspirations to that. Set the, the knowingness. I know the truth is there's a God in everybody. There's a spark of God in everybody. There's a spark of God in me. And that spark, talking to that spark, would never betray each other. That's the good news. But the second level, the one with boundaries, means, but since we're not there yet, let me set some healthy boundaries. See? So... Maybe when you're setting healthy boundaries and you start feeling safe enough to know, I don't do foolish things. So I trust in God that I'm not in a body, but I'm not going to go jump off a cliff and say, catch me, Lord. Because I'm not there yet. But I know the truth is I could do that. The truth. If I were in my divinity, I could do it. But you're not always in your divinity. So just set boundaries for now. The second category is kind of setting up a safe environment for us to practice trusting more. Is that making sense? We all have to learn to do this. This is not a, a talk on psychology about trust and doubt. This is all going to end up back to the spiritual, the divine again, because ultimately, and one of you asked about that word solitude, which has so many layers to this too. You can try pushing people away and you end up alone. Is that trust? Uh, well, I don't know who to trust. And it sounds logical, by the way. I would definitely trust people if only they were more trustworthy. Perfect. The great, great proverb axiom there. So you blame everybody else for your lack of trust experience. Feeling more trust is a good barometer to how divinely or spiritual your consciousness is. Honestly, if you say, I'm really spiritual, but I don't trust anybody, you just blew it out of the water. How much you live a life of trust is a great barometer to how spiritual you really are. And for some people, that gets messed up. You don't understand. I've been hurt a lot, so I have to be careful. Good. Be careful. But come out. So you're being careful, but how, how much more have you turned the volume up on trust this year compared to last year? Well, if it's improving, I think you're on a good route. You're doing that second level. Instead of just untrustworthiness, you're playing with the world of boundaries and you're saying, hey, I'm determined to know everyone's divinity, so I am working on trust. So come out, but come out in a safe way. Come out in a way that you are able to, you know, a step at a time, a step, a day at a time. Well, recovery is about a day at a time, okay? It's about a day at a, just a step at a time. All right? So I need to trust more. No, you don't. Slow it down. And let's find out how much you can trust today. What, what feels right? 
Do you have more trustworthy people around you? Your head, which is the ego controlling your thinking, is going to tell you you'll trust more when those people get it together. And I'm saying, technically, the truth is, believe it or not, the more I step into God, the more I am trust. Trust is a consciousness. It's not an evaluation. It is not. It's not something that, that is a measurement. It's a consciousness. So you, you can't really put some sort of evaluative kind of number to it. It's a consciousness. And so why does God trust? How do I trust more? We think it's when other people become more trustworthy. And I'm saying God doesn't wait for us to become more trustworthy to be able to trust. God trusts itself. Why and how? Because it knows what it is. There can't be anything untrustworthy. Well, we've betrayed God. God doesn't see it that way. God sees us as having a weird dream where we do all kinds of bizarre things. But all God knows, historically, if you look at it, a chronological video, God created its children. God said, let there be light. Poof, there were God's children, this holiness that was sharing you know, bliss with God. Those children said, and we're going to exercise free will and wonder what life would be like if we were outside of God. Those children did this. That was all. We closed our eyes, imagined it. It looks like it took 10 billion years, but it was just one split second because time's an illusion. So what God witnessed was its children said, hey, great to be with you, God. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. Wow, that was weird. Anyway, bliss. <laughs> I just had the strangest dream. And God will say, was it real? No, then let's not bother with it. It's back to reality. That's what it looks like chronologically. Just And you're back. What it looks like in the illusion, in time, oh man, you know, okay, hi God, this is great, bliss, hold on, oh my God, oh my, oh, you owe me, no, I owe you, males are better, females are better, oh, gay, straight, and religion, politics, and what do I vote on, ah, just like madness, madness, billions of years of madness, and what's really strange, we, we actually think, some of us think it's hopeless, you die, and that's the end, that's some traditions. Some say, well, no, um, if you, uh, yeah, it's a messed up world and you're messed up, but if you accept Jesus as your personal savior, you know, there's a chance. Except there's only 144,000 throughout history of them that are allowed to make it. I, I already lost. The first time I had any thought whatsoever that was undivine, which was like the moment I arrived. Uh, you know, I mean, as soon as a Dr. Swatsy, Ask, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> do I know you? Um, you already have your first resentment, you know? <laughs> and, and so now you're probably not one of the 144,000. Oh, but if you really try and if you really, so that's called the religion of begging. Uh, please, God, let me be one of the 140. If I have a conscience, you know what I think? I want to be one of the hundred, and I go, I can't. I can't wish I were one of the 144,000 knowing that trillions of others don't get to make it. I can't with my clear conscience. I can't. That's not the way my mind can work. In my days as a kid, when I tried for a job, they would go, okay, it's between you and five others. I'd be like, oh, give it to them. I mean, it was, <laughs> I need a job too, but I was always, you know, like, you know, something will happen for me. Let that, because they need the job. You know, like it's weird. So I can't do the religion of, or the belief system of, begging. That does, something's not right about that. Then there's another tradition that says, well, after a thousand lifetimes of holiness, you might be able to make it back. They're both religions of odds. You know, they're really gambles. One is hoping that somehow you're the one that God, Jesus, or whatever, decides to drop its grace upon. The other is, man, just keep grinding. A little more perfect this time. A little more perfect. And you just do this lifetime after lifetime till you evolve to what? To becoming God-minded. But guess what? The day you arrive and say, I got it. I'm God-minded. God's going to go, well, yeah, but you never were not God-minded. You just thought you weren't. And now you're back. Well, if I can do that, apparently everybody can. So just wait another million years and we might get it. And, and that's kind of 
good because there's a chance you were evolving. But there's a third option, and that is the recognition that these are all still subject to my opinions of whether I was holy enough for Jesus or evolved enough to Eastern traditions. There's another option, that I am as God created me. And this is just about me remembering. How can I remember? How do I remember? What, how do I trust who I really am? I got to trust my, and people make this up. They, I got to start trusting my gut. I wouldn't if I were you. I got to start trusting my muscle test. I got to start trusting my whatever. Everybody's trusting everything. I, I wouldn't because it's still subject to opinions. So when you sit with someone, a counselor, a psychic, anybody, ask for God's opinion to come through that person. Not your own, not your own head. And some people are like that. Oh, I learned to trust my gut. You know, I, I trust my gut when it comes to meeting people. You're, what is your gut? There's God in a gut. Which one do you want to worship? Which one do you want to become one with? I trust my gut so much I've become one. I'm now a gut. Does that even sound like a turn on at all? And then there's I trust God and that's what I've become. I like that. How do I trust God? Well, one way, how do I become one with God? One way is trusting God. Well, I trust in God. It's people that I don't trust. It doesn't work like that. God is one. So remember this. Learn to trust in God, meaning that God is as God says it is. Divine, bliss, it's perfect, whole. Learn to trust in your real self, not your gut, your real self, your God, Christ self. But don't say you've reached that if you don't trust others because the more I become aware of who I am, the more excited I become spiritually and I start by default seeing it in others. If ego comes in and says, you are so Christy, look at you. But those people, man, you don't know which ones. You, so now you have the, the religion of squint eyes, watching people, you know, I'm on to you. You know, that's not peaceful. It will happen. And I'm not saying we should rush to this. Everybody at their own pace. Walk towards greater trust. Even nurture it through exercises such as, let's see, um, someone asked me out on a date. I'm kind of nervous about it. If I trust, affirm the presence of God in yourself and the other, of course, but the other, if, they're, or if you or the other is completely hijacked by the ego, don't expect God to show up in the date. So because I know the truth is I'm one with God, but I respect the illusion that we're not there yet, my pattern is I go on a date and something goes wrong. You go out on a date, something goes wrong. We have some patterns. So we need to talk about this. We need to, to discuss this sort of stuff with each other. What, what are the patterns for you? What are the patterns? If, if I tend to fall in love overnight, you know, love at first sight or whatever they call it, I've got I've to know that. I've got to know that and maybe share that when the time is right with this other person. I have this tendency to jump in the sack or whatever thing you've got as a pattern. Talk it over and ask each other to help each other walk through this. Now, if they can't help you walk through it, they're not trustworthy. If they can, wow, they, they are trustworthy. Well, they are for that date. I should now sit home and say, thank you. Here's what I would do. We made it through a whole first date, close the door and call that success. Because the ego mind's gonna go, yeah, but they're probably setting you up for the second day. Shush, just tell that, no, stop. I don't need that today. Thank you. This worked. And do it again on a second date and a third date and so on. Grow the trust levels within this vessel called safety. Right? Safety. I'm afraid to go to, I don't know, a dentist. Um, let's say. <laughs> I had to look at a specific person for that one. Um, you, you go to a, a dentist and you're afraid of the dentist. You can stay afraid of the dentist forever. Or you can go, you know what? In your mind, you say, wow, they handled this very well. <sighs> now I feel like I can expand my trust. 
You see, make everything into this kind of a exercise where progress, progress. And if ever someone betrays your trust, the, the dentist, oh, God, did I forget Novocaine again? You know, uh, you know, as you're like, ah, you know, <clears throat> dang. Take one step back, reevaluate. Maybe this isn't the dentist for you. The one that does a lot of cannabis prior to, you know, sur oral surgery. <laughs> Maybe they kind of space out. They're like, hey, I just kind of went with it, you know. Um, that may not be the one for you. Or it might be the perfect one for you. I don't know. All I know is let me step back a step. Let me breathe, recalibrate. Always come forward again after you recalibrate. All, never freeze. Always be willing. You know what that's called? Trust. So by us trusting, we're growing spiritually. We keep waiting for everyone else to have those, you know, perfect love for us or perfect trust. And every bit of this is, is, should be seen as a moving forward. I would give thanks for this, the lesson learned, if there was a lesson learned, and then forward again. If I shut down in any way, shape, or form, and most areas that we shut down are somehow affiliated with the concept of trust. You know, I can't trust anymore, that sort of thing. Um, I know that we can justify it, but watch yourselves. Because if you start to justify, I don't trust people. I don't trust men. I don't trust women. I don't trust whatever it is. But I have good reason. And now you give your checklist of reasons why. This is called the ego building a case. I'm not saying that your hurts didn't happen or that your hurt isn't justified or your distrust isn't justified. I'm not telling you that. I'm saying, do you want that to be your reality? The truth of the matter is, when we completely awaken and we're not capable of projecting our lessons onto other people, they will not be able to act untrustworthy, which is really surreal to try to imagine. People could not betray you if you're in your holy mind because when they did betray you, they were reflecting your lessons. When you're beyond lessons, it won't happen. Well, here's a good example. Jesus was betrayed. Isn't, wasn't he holy and why did he? he? He says himself, I didn't choose to see it that way. So it doesn't mean people won't do selfish things because they're in their ego. But it does mean you don't have to be involved in your mind seeing it, seeing it that way. So forgiveness technically I've said this many times, but check out the book, my book on the book of love and forgiveness, because in there, there's a simple one of the exercises for forgiveness. One is refuse to hate the person, learn what you can from whatever experience or experiences with a person. And then can you affirm the light of God in that person, which is called trust? You, you, the idea of affirming light in people, when you have a practitioner of science of mind or a chaplain of unity or whatever other kinds of healers, anybody that's using advanced consciousness in healing is technically practicing trust. When an, when an affirmation is used, a decree or an affirmation that says, I know you are healthy and whole, right? You are saying, and I trust that to be the truth. You're not saying, I hope it's true. You're saying, I affirm that it's true, and you're trusting it to be so. But deep down, what does that mean? It means I know that there's a part of you beyond the body and beyond illness or beyond financial issues. I'm speaking to that part, and I'm saying, Lazarus, come forth. So when you tr really trust, now this is the tricky part. When you really, when we really trust people, the God in them actually comes out more. But I'm not talking about foolish trust, and that's the trick. Well, you, you said it brings out their divinity. I trusted somebody and they total, totally ripped me off or broke my heart. Because you were still dabbling with human stuff. You were hoping they were trustworthy. And you were saying, I'm, I'm going to trust you with my heart. They broke your heart. See, but you had conditions. I'm going to, yes, yes, I will I say I do. And I love you too. And let's get married or whatever the thing is. But deep down, you're saying, I, I do trust you as long as you don't leave me, you don't betray me, and so on, as long as I'm number one in your life. See what I'm saying? Hidden agendas. And that's why if someone ever does harm your sense of trust, to know whether you had agendas or whether your trust was authentic 
there's those few steps. One, can you see beyond it? Were you looking for their divinity? Did you have a contract of agendas there? And also, are you able to still speak to them? Are you still able to um, um, communicate the problems, the issues? And I'm not saying there's something wrong with you if you can't. Sometimes it's not going to happen in this lifetime when somebody's done something horrible enough. But can you if you had to? And if you had the chance, could you communicate lessons around this? You know, can you, can you talk to the person about, here's what happened for me? Or is it just they're bad? Because when you shut somebody down and say, you're untrustworthy, your part of you has just died with them. I personally, uh, I'm, I'm an odd individual in so many ways. I totally accept that. I get that. So when it comes to my own life, I tend to trust and give a second chance, a third chance. You know, I tend to be very trusting. I would like to say that I do my best to really penetrate all things and trust as God trusts. You know what? Here's my opinion. They are trustworthy or they're not trustworthy. That's an opinion. But God, you show me. I really aspire to divine trust. The divine in me trusting the divine in you. That's what I aspire towards. Very rarely do I do the opposite and just think of somebody as untrustworthy, but it could happen, I imagine. But like most human beings, what I'm recommending is own that sometimes you'll feel someone's untrustworthy. Remember, if they are and all things are a mirror, you've just condemned yourself as well. All of you people are completely untrustworthy means and all of you that represent parts of me are untrustworthy. That doesn't feel real good. So do the opposite and just leap, catch me. And they're like, what? Bam, you hit the ground. You see? I forgot, we, we probably should have set up an agreement and some, maybe some boundaries. When I say catch me, that would be, I don't know, a signal um, to catch me. You know, mosh pit time, here I go. I jump out there and you're like, what's a mosh pit? Boom, I hit the ground. And then I say, you guys are untrustworthy. You're like, what, what, what? We set ourselves up and we don't realize it. We set ourselves up so often, you know, dating people that were not really healthy, dating people that are not into spirituality or psychological growth and so on. And I'm not saying that means that if they're not into this, they're bad people. I'm just saying we, we leap a lot of times into areas that if we would have sat honestly with it, it would, we would have recognized it's not the best way to go, which then makes us resent them. But what you're really resenting is yourself for having trusted in something that wasn't trustworthy. You see? So now I'm doubting my own divinity. If I was divine, I should have known that. So I'm either going to judge you, and if I'm really courageous, I'm going to look at my part, which most people don't want to do. So there's just people you shouldn't trust. We take it back to here. Well, wait, what could I have learned from this? And now I, oh, loosen it a little up on you, loosen it a little up on me, and ask God, show me how to really trust. And so, in, you know, in my life, I do a lot of, you know, it's a very strange thing. If I, if I have friends or students that come to a point where something happens and they, I can see, I can definitely see it, when people start losing faith or having doubts about me or something about me, whatever it happens to be, you know, if I see a friend, especially if it's a close friend, start to drift into, hmm, doubting me, I can usually see it, and usually I will set something up. I will, I, will, I will bring up a test to help them. Listen, Humpty Dumpty, you're either coming or going. What's it going to be? And I'll, I will. I will impose some kind of a test in the situation that's going to make them go, I get it, got it, I'm good. Or it'll push them over the edge, as it were. And I don't mind. It's like, goodbye because I want to know where you're at. Jesus used a phrase, you're either for me or against me. Now, he wasn't saying it in the evaluative way, like, you, you know, you're, you're against me, you're bad people. He's saying, just make up your mind. You really get me or you don't. Let's just be clear, let's be honest. It doesn't mean that he didn't trust their divinity. He was just saying, right for now, here's where, we at, where we're at. Judas betrays him, and yet, he didn't see it that way. Yeah, you know, Judas, he has this thing, he's got this thing, you know, and he's just kind of like that, and, you know. 
You don't think he's psychic? Jesus? The Christ? You don't think? As soon as he met Judas, he's like, oh, geez, Judas. There he is. You know, he knew. He, he, oh, you're the guy. Yeah. You know, you got Aries squared this and blah, blah. no, you know, but you know, it's like he, he knew that's the guy. What a courageous individual to say, hi, nice to meet you, Judas. Pleasure, you know, and knowing where this is going. That's how I feel sometimes in relationships, friendships, that, you know, knowing where it's going to go. And so I, I will put something into the relationship, some situation where it'll kind of help us go one way or the other. You see, instead of just dragging this on, it'll, you're, you're in, you're out, you know, where are we at? So that, could, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things that can make it kind of challenging to be around me, I think, for any <laughs> long period of time. Um, it's so funny because people get so analytical sometimes. There's this guy I was helping volunteering at Judy's estate sale that she did this weekend. And um, one of her team members was walking with me and he was going to carry something heavy. I said, oh, I'll do it, you know. And is he really? I said, yeah, let me. So I carry this thing and he's following along and he says, can I ask you a personal question? It's like this moment he's got Michael alone. It's going to let's let's go deep into this, man. Can I ask you a personal question? Yeah, anything, you know, and he goes, Sometimes I've seen you, you know, with the masks, you know, and you wear a mask, sometimes you don't. What makes you take it off? I go, when I forget to put it on. <laughs> there was no deeper answer. In his mind, he's like, oh, you know, I wonder if it's, be, you know, this and is it certain kinds of people or if he's close to not being close to, but, yeah, you know, but out of respect, we're in a, there's a public thing, I'm volunteering at a public event, out of respect for the owners of the company, it's like, well, I'll wear a mask, you know, in case that's helpful to her clients that come in. But wear it, not wear it, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. But this guy had this deeper thought about it, I guess. And I'm like, well, that's, I forget to put it on. I had it tied around my wrist all eight hours, you know? And I'm like, a lot of good that's doing for anybody. I just forgot. So this concept, it's, please remember, trust is not something where the ego tells you, okay, fine, if you're gonna start being healthier, I'm going to help you, which it isn't. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you evaluate how much each person is worth trusting. 10%, 15%, 83%. You know. That's not God. It's the ego. And it knows that we want to move forward, so it gives you a little bone to chew on, a little bit of trust, but it keeps telling you that nobody's worth 100% of your trust. However, if you have to find that there's nobody that's completely trustworthy, what you're really saying, there's no part of God that's completely trustworthy. That's dangerous. If these are expressions of God and they're all flawed, maybe you're not seeing the unflawed part of them, first of all. I mean, imagine this. I'm going to reach into your soul and pull out your divinity, and it's going to make you walk when you couldn't walk. It's going to give you sight when you were blind. Jesus wasn't fixing illnesses. He was evoking the God in everybody, and it made them not be sick. Because in God, there's no sickness. He's pulling the divine out. He could not have done that if he hadn't trusted in their divinity. And yet, he still respected the illusion to you know, one degree or another. For example, uh, let's go to Jerusalem today. And he said, not now. Jude, you know, Jesus, let's do this. No, no, this, today's not the day. He was still trusting the illusion, knowing who to send for this, who to send for that, still respecting the illusion, but he knew the truth the whole time. What we're doing is coming from the other side. Instead of knowing the truth and respecting the illusion, we're like, I'll know the truth later. Right now, I'm just going to respect a lot of illusion at best. Okay? So know that what I'm talking about, please, is a consciousness. Don't be talking fifth dimension ascension. Practice trusting more, and that's going to happen automatically. Practice holding a consciousness of trust, but respect the illusion. Are you moving forward or not? Are you learning to cut back on your trust? I hope not, but it can happen. One hurt, another hurt, another hurt, and, and then you like go to that place of never again. All that does is sign you up for more intense lessons related to trust. This doesn't work that way where you go never again and you just stay stagnant like that. All it means is more lessons because trust 
The consciousness of God is called trust, trusts you to come forward. It's going to happen. God has already said, you think you're sleeping and you're dreaming a nightmare that you're separate from me and it can't be done. So I'm already affirming that you're waking up. And trust me, if God decides you're going to wake up, you're going to wake up the easy way or the hard way. So lessons in trust come our way. When you pray, I want to ascend, you, you don't just get to ascend. Everything that is not very ascensionish in you comes up. I want to I want to have the Christ mind. Great. Everything not Christy comes up. I want to be a trusting individual. Wonderful. Guess what comes up? The opposite of trust, doubt. So uh, um, I, I just had this this lady. She might be watching online. She's Eastern Europe. And she said, Michael, I'm, she had a private session. She said, I want to start off with saying this. I've only discovered spirituality months ago or a short time ago. Bless you. And she said, and I, I've never trusted anybody. God, Jesus, people, never trusted anybody. And I saw your talks here and there. And, and I trust you. I completely trust you. Now, that's not like, like, oh, I'm so flattered. Guys, imagine someone telling you, I completely trust you and you're the first and only person on the planet. How do you think of that? Where, where, where does your mind go with that? First of all, I feel honored. Second of all, I think of myself as a representative, for lack of wording, of God. So when you say you're trusting me, I know you're actually learning to trust God because I'm just the you know, arbitrator, you know, and I'm the bridge. So thank you, but it also means you're learning to trust God, which I know she gets. And she's like, so I'm, I'm starting to trust God and all that. There's also the human part that's like, don't screw this up. A human being is putting everything into you. Don't mess this up. You know, there's that, the little bit of weird stuff that happens in us. But there's this deep appreciation. And my job would be to reflect this back to her. That's, that's your consciousness growing. It isn't about me being, because hang around me enough and you're going to become annoyed about something. So I absolutely trust you. Oh, cool. Let's go out to you. Where do you want to go? Uh, I don't know. Pizza Hut or whatever, you know, Domino's. Oh, I don't eat pizza. I'm gluten free. You know, you're a gluten for punishment, you know. So, <clears throat> so, so now they already resent me. And all we did was talk about getting pizza. And oh, no, no, I got to go to, you know, a veggie place or vegan place. It doesn't, we all will do that. So what am I doing? And, and how much I appreciate that anybody can see goodness in me at all. And each of us should be really, really grateful. When someone sees goodness in you, they're stepping forward. And they chose you as their physician, metaphorically. So please, see it. Don't brush it off. Don't reject it. Don't run from it. All of these conversations that we're having here, you know, that word solitude is so, has so many layers to it. You can push people away, or you can push through your issues. Which one? Which one of the pushing do you want to do? Push others away. Oh, yeah, but I have reason. I, I know. So what you need is therapy. You know, that's what you need. You need to talk through this stuff and get to the point where you say, I've now moved through by pushing through doubt towards trust. Doubt versus trust. Okay. I'm pushing through doubt towards trust, but not in a naive, ego-based way. I'm pushing through and I'm doing it a step at a time, step at a time, but I'm making progress. That's a good sign. The opposite is I can't push through towards trust. I'm pushing away everybody I distrust. Now you're affirming backsliding or falling the other direction. I understand anybody that's watching or here in person or online, I understand that part of you is going, but you don't understand. The things that have happened to me, I can't trust people. I do trust that. I do believe that. I do get that. Many of us could say the same thing. Our lives, one betrayal is enough to make us doubt everybody, isn't it? If, it's, if it hits us hard enough, I can never love again. Yeah, I trusted my first love to be everything, and, and it collapsed. You know, That's all the investment we put into it. Trust me, 
When you thought you were trusting, your ego was there sometimes getting your, your, your attachments inflated on that so that when it got punctured, it really blew because the ego wanted you to never again have a chance of trusting. Why? Because trust is God and the ego doesn't exist in God. So trust is a major test of life. Did I tell you leap? No, I did not. That's a day at a time. But while I'm doing my step-by-step -step lessons in trust, I am also affirming I'm already there in the trust of God. Does that make sense? I refuse the first category of untrustworthy. I'm, I just I don't let my mind go there much at all. I, being any of us, I hope. But I, I just refuse to play that game. Move towards trust. You're allowed to set it up with healthy boundaries so that you can know that you know, I'm going to put a toe in the water before jumping in. Was that distrust? You know what it was? I want to make sure it's a safe environment to jump in that it's not too hot or cold. Is that wrong of me? Why didn't I just trust that God figured it out? Because I'm still here. I still cast a shadow when the sun shines on me. I still leave footprints in the mud. I might want to just assume I'm not all the way there yet. Catch me, Lord. Boom. You know, as you boil away. You know. Just, no, it's okay, guys. For now, we're being spoiled by God who says, you know, I know that you're divine. You don't need all this, but you don't. So you know what, guys? I love you enough to say, why don't you just do test the toe? And when you say, wow, that water feels really refreshing, then get in. I don't mind you test the water a little. Check things out a little bit. Get to know somebody before you get too involved. All of the boundary stuff is fine, but... It's only until we really completely remember who we are. Remember, God trusts because God knows what it is, so nothing can betray it. I can get to a point in knowing who I am that nothing can betray me. And when that happens, I'll also be trusting in the divinity of everybody else, and they cannot betray me. Does that all make sense? It's, it's not easy. I know that it isn't easy to, to completely understand that, but it's also very hard on our minds to hear. When people betrayed us, they were mirroring lessons of ours. I'm not justifying what they did. I'm just saying there's 8 billion people on the planet. Why were they in your house? I mean, call me silly, call me presumptuous, but mm, you know, they were in your house. So they were mirroring lessons. And the hardships are trying, from the ego's perspective, to shut you down. What God's hoping for is you'll push through and say, despite the way you behaved, there's a part of you made in God's image, and I pray for you to discover that. And in advance, I'm already affirming it so. And I close with this. Remember Jesus' experience with Peter denying him and Judas betraying him. When Peter, who represented all the apostles, not just himself, he represented them all. We have doubts about you, Jesus. I mean, we get it. We watched you do amazing things. But deep down, we have doubts. So when Peter betrays Jesus, technically, he's acting out on uh, all the apostles and all human beings. Experience with God. I want to trust, but yet I have doubts. So, so they manifested this. And Jesus' comments... To Peter, Peter, you're going to deny knowing me for your own safety, for your own security. You're going to deny. I would, what do you mean? I've walked with you. I've watched you do amazing things. I'm your man. You know, I stand up for you. You're going to deny knowing me. Jesus, that makes no sense at all. No sense at all. I, I believe in you. You're going to deny me. You're going to deny ever knowing me. So, when Peter does deny him, what most people don't realize is earlier in the ministry, Jesus, like I was saying, I put people to the test sometimes to see if they're going to keep their you know, faith and trust in me as a person or friend or whatever. So Jesus says, I'm paraphrasing, do you love me, Peter? Jesus says, yes, Lord, I love you. He asks him a second time, uh, Peter, do you, do you really love me? Lord, yes, I already told you. What are we, Aramaic here? Yes, Greek, Ara what language do you want it in? I told you, I love you. 
Oh, third time, third time. Do you love me? Yes, my Lord, I love you. Why did he ask him three times? You know why? Because later he denies him three times. So Jesus was setting him up to get him to affirm his love three times to compensate for the three denials later. To wash it. So now he's denying, washed, denying, washed, third time, denying, washed. Pretty cool. But adding to that, Jesus says, you're going to deny me. And he's saying, no, I wouldn't. Three times he does this. And afterwards, Jesus says, shh, Peter. I'm paraphrasing, but he says, talk to the hand, okay? <laughs> Listen, Peter, shh, shh, shh. Dude, you're going to do it. But he says this, but I've already prayed in advance for you to come through that. That, awesome is a good word for it. The people that have betrayed you, your exes, your parents, or, that have betrayed you, remember, you're not justifying their behavior when you say you forgive them. What, you, what I'm saying today about trust is affirm that you and I are going through this, but I'm already seeing you on the other side. Meaning, I'm seeing the God in you. I'm not seeing what the human will do and not do and betrayals and ups and downs. I, I see you. He wasn't just foretelling it. He's telling him a, a rule. I'm, I see the Christ in you. I'm looking beyond the stuff to the end result. And that is an important message. That should be talked about a lot more in teachings about Christianity. To see people way over here and not in the stuff of what they do. Because now I'm enmeshed with the, the doings of life. Should I ignore the doings? No, no. Respect the illusion. Play the game. But affirm. Even though you're betraying me, I'm affirming that I'm already at the other end. In God, I'm already fine. It lessens the sting. Even if you're in physical pain and you might pass over, remember, all of this is the illusion of life. You need the medications. You need the shoulder rubs. Whatever you need, great. But way over here, I'm already through this. You will not die and go to a bad place. See yourself at the end result, the light of God. But also be willing to see others there. Mom, Dad, you did such and such, but I'm already affirming. You guys, you didn't like me or you didn't do this or whatever. It would have been nice, but I'm already seeing you there. And remember this. Prayers do work. Word does have an effect. Consciousness does create, right? So if I say, Mom, Dad, I'm already seeing you at the other end in the light. Wherever they are, heaven or hell, I swear to you, they'll get the message and rise to higher levels of consciousness. I don't care how mean they were on the planet, your exes or whomever we're talking about, even if they're still alive, wherever they are, their soul is lifted by your affirmation of who they really are. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Take a few centering breaths. We'll have a few moments of meditation. Tune in, reflect anything you heard today that made the most sense, that could be the most helpful to you, and breathe it in. It's yours. It's not something you heard. It's something you are accepting as, yes, truth. Anything you heard, anything that could be helpful to you in your life. And as you sit and soak that in, notice it shouldn't have a whole lot of yeah, but to it. It's just beautiful, whatever it is, just tune into the feeling of it. it it's, it's already magical.
recognize how just one truth or several can change your life. What did we hear about trust or the opposite, doubt? Just soak it in for a moment. And one added concept. You work on trusting yourself or others. If ever it gets to the point where trusting is going to become more harm than good, that's a good rule of thumb. Surrender those individuals, instead of giving up on them, surrender them to God and allow God to find someone who will help them make the next step. It just might not be you. Surrender them. You're not giving up on them. You're not failing, nor are you allowing them to fail. You're surrendering them, letting it be recycled. Now take just a moment. Look at someone in your life, whoever comes to mind, and we allow the Divine Mother to bring the right people to mind. But think of someone in your life who proved to be untrustworthy in your experience with them. Whether it's something they did to you, your finances, your family, somebody that proved to be untrustworthy. Then review in your mind what it was, their words, their actions, the details of what it was. You're not getting emotionally invested, but if emotions come, that's fine. But what was it that made them seemingly be untrustworthy? Be clear and honest about it. How did you get to the place of not Trust, trusting them again or in that situation. Just be clear about what it was. Then ask yourself, honestly, if you had known some of what you learned today, if you had known about boundaries and putting safe parameters on that situation, how will it have affected? How would it have affected what happened and their achieving untrustworthy status? If you had implemented more boundaries, how would you have done that? It's a learning right now. How might you have done better boundaries? Did you get hurt because you leapt in? Did you get hurt because you shut down and let nobody in? Whatever it is, and or where you lacked healthy boundaries, just see it differently. And then, what if you had known about divine trust? Imagine yourself in that scenario what if you accessed the divine in you and you were affirming, seeing, finding, evoking the divine in them? Call it make-believe if you want, but visualize how it would have been different. What would it have looked like for you to have that level of consciousness. The divine in you evokes trust worthiness in them. This is more of an energetic thing because it seems surreal to have that level of consciousness. So it might seem very much make-believe or it might be like you're right on it. Either way, how would that have changed everything? 
How would it have improved the situation? And if we know that you could have done the divine part or the boundary part, you've already seen how the situation might have been different, then that means that you did play a part in their being untrustworthy. You did play a part. You didn't do the divine bit, you didn't do the boundary bit, the two out of three parts. So it ended up in the third part, which is untrustworthiness. Now I get it. Now I get it. Brother, sister, I get it. Please forgive me as I choose now to forgive myself. I love you, the real you, and I love the real me. All is given to the heart of God. Thank you so much for showing up today. Something in you and something in me needed you to be in my vision today so that we could say goodbye and release this to a new level. And you taught me that I could do this differently. I learned the hard way. Thank you. And so it is. Beautiful. How's that feel? Good. Um, how many of you felt it was really excessively challenging to do this with that person, this process? Anybody? A few of you, several of you, right on. Courageous, man, good, good, good way to go. How many of you found surprisingly easy to do that? Several, good, glad, either way, you did it. So it doesn't matter if it was challenging or easy. You did it. That's the important piece. All right. Thank you. We're going to do our closing prayer. First, we'll take up our collection, and I'll share a couple of quick announcements. I pray that today covered most or all of the things brought up, even the not this, not that, the solitude part. We even talked about the, the dream of life, but honoring uh, the illusion versus... Uh, without, without, you know, the credence part. <laughs> <laughs> Giving it too much credence. Please, please be as generous as you can be. We greatly appreciate it. We love and appreciate your support. Um, so thank you. And the folks online, same thing. You're not in the same building, but you, you can still extend your gratitude for the work, so thank you. Some of you are watching this on YouTube months, years later. Still, you can say thank you and send a donation. It's appreciated. Um, and I'm very grateful that our board and our members have created a space where we can do so much of what we do for free as well, donation basis, that sort of thing. But I'm really proud of our group for manifesting the ability to do so much um, without charging. So I, I think that's really, really cool. Um, we're going to give our prosperity prayer. It's on your bulletin. It's posted online as well. Concentrating, really putting your consciousness into this because it's the truth of God. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so it is. Thank you. It was already mentioned that Donnie is here doing the angel readings, so um, you can still book. He's staying an extra day over, so you can still book some sessions. And what we did one of the other times he's come here is he just ended up staying like a week. Um, so you know, book your sessions while he's here. He's from out of the area, so he comes here once in a while. If you're online and you'd like to book a session with him, just contact the office um, and ask how to schedule a phone appointment with him. And one of the things I really lo love and appreciate about Danny is um, 
he gets what I'm saying when I said earlier about asking God to come through your readers, asking God, you know, he gets that rather than I'm doing, it's, you know, I'm serving. And so the greater comes through, right? Yeah, thanks. All right, so a couple quick announcements while they're passing the baskets and then we'll do our closing prayer. Um, first of all, um, remember there's all these various forms of social media, so watch us. You can become a member of our Facebook group. It's a private group, Friends of Michael Merdad um, Facebook group. Um, remember that you can book crystal bed sessions if you're from out of town. It's advisable while you're here and have that available. It's really some trippy stuff. Uh, it really just such really so many multi-dimensional experiences people have on the crystal bed um, but it's in our healing room here on the property um, let's see what else we've got um, you can book private sessions with me online um, I know that there's always a waiting list it could be two months or three months if you have an urgency you can please don't take advantage of this in it in excessively but if you have an emergency or a really pressing situation um, you can ask let us know that because if we have a cancellation or sometimes i'll just fit more people in in the wee hours of the day so um, let us know if we can be of service that way chaplains are available bless you chaplains are available after service if you'd like they'll take time to sit with you and pray with you if you have something pressing going on you want some insight they do prayer work counseling hands-on healing depending on what a person's looking for. But it is miraculous work. All righty. Thank you. Yes? It probably say Unity of Sedona, not Phoenix. <laughs> and no, I'm not moving to Phoenix. So, um, but thanks for asking. So, um, the, we'll pro, you'll, both. So there's a website, Unity, Unity of Sedona. You see our prayers. We still say Unity of Sedona on our materials. Um, that'll be changed soon. The officially September 1st, um, unofficially by some people's standards, it started a month or two ago. And we did announce it then. Um, and um, other people were, you know, was, we were thinking it was January 1st. So it's kind of in this, this latter part of the year. But um, we just talked about it in our board meeting, and um, the board members um, voted in approval for September 1st to get everything switched over. We announced it and started switching it over a month or two ago, but it'll be more official. We'll have the paperwork reflecting it. But people that know of us as Unity of Sedona, they'll still find us. We'll still be there, formerly Unity of Sedona. Um, and you know how internet stuff is. It, it's there forever. So I'm sure you'll still find us through that route. Is that what you were asking? Go to Unity of Sedona during this last month of August, uh, what year is this, 2022? Um, use Unity of Sedona in case you're watching um, live and you watch this later. Um, but by September 1st, the websites will probably sw be switched over. And you'll look for the Global Center for Christ consciousness. Yes. Yeah, so when you watch this, um, we are on YouTube, Unity of Sedona, but also you could Google my, uh, what do they call it on YouTube, uh, channel. You'll find M Michael Merdad channel or whatever, okay? So it's neither church really, but it'll appear in either of those places too. All right, any others? All right. Please stand for our closing prayer. How are you feeling inside? Wonderful. Good. Did you get it? Yes. Right. Can you see it making a difference if you apply this in your life? Definitely. Yeah. Can you see where and how? Okay. And I, especially that part, it is obvious how easy it is to have distrust, isn't it? And do you, do you see how people are compelled to look for reasons and ways to not trust people? I mean, that is not the divine way, but that's the typical ego world. Find reasons to not trust. Why? Then you'll shut down. Why? So you don't go home. Is that obvious? More, maybe more obvious now? Good. And the other option, trust. Leap. Get hurt and shut down. That. That's the ego sabotaging left and right. Somewhere in the middle, a day at a time, but keep moving forward. 
push through towards trust. Trust someone, even if they can only be trusted for one day, trust them that day, give thanks you accomplished it, and that's it. Wrap it up and move on with your life. I only knew them for a day, but I completely trusted. Good job. Okay, you see a counselor, you surrender to them, you know, in the context of their, you know, whatever, and then they move or pass away. I only had one session, give thanks. And as I've often said, dentist or whatever other uh, uh, metaphor, but like a chiropractor. Oh, I could never get my, and you're like, I have headaches every day. Can't get, can't trust chiropractor. You know, because they crack your neck. They adjust your cervical, you know, and other bones of the spine. Oh, no, I don't like it. You listen, go and you can find one that doesn't do major adjustments. Stop making excuses to be untrust, untrusting. Me? Because I'm weird. I'm the type that's going to go, oh, never been to a chiropractor. Great. I'm going to lay on that table. If he happens to break my neck and I die, I leave this planet ascending in trusting other people. <laughs> I'd rather do that than live forever and not trust anybody. My head is in your hands. I'm ascending. <laughs> Snap, you know. They know what they're doing, man. They know what they're doing. And if you distrust naturopaths, chiropractors, old school osteopaths, which is brilliant, cranial sacral people, if you distrust them because something could go wrong, especially since medical association tells you everything will go wrong with these people, go and read about the standard allopathic medicine, how often that goes wrong. They're, it's so messy, they have to have disclaimers on every ad. This might kill you. It's just strange. The odds, the odds are good, man. When you go for a massage or a chiropractic adjustment, the odds are good that you come out better. And you don't get those odds in other uh, practices, let's say. All right, so give people a chance. Hmm. So grateful for the light in other people and myself. So great in any case in my life where I've ever trusted and it reflected back to me either lessons or beautiful scenarios. Thank you. Thank you to anybody that's ever been trustworthy. Hmm. So sorry to any individual that I've ever projected extreme lessons in trust. I set you up to fail. We say that from our hearts. Sorry about that. My exes or whomever. Forgiven, gone, it's okay. Grateful, grateful, grateful to myself. I see myself getting it and I'm trusting more. I'm trusting. What am I trusting? God, that God is and is in all people. To all people, I affirm the trustworthy parts of you I choose to evoke that forward so more and more people can act, behave, speak in trustworthy ways. In advance, I thank you all. The light of God surrounds us. We are the, light of God. the love of God enfolds us. We are the, love of God. the power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we go, God is. I am, we are, and so it is. Thank you very much. God bless you all.